Did you fill out that form? Uh, yeah. On your first visit to me each month, fill out a report of all your activities the previous month. Make sure it's accurate, legible, sign it. Whenever we have a scheduled supervision, you sign in on the sheet in the reception area, let the security guard know you're here. Okay. Whenever you enter the building, you're gonna be searched. Come by yourself, don't bring friends, don't bring family. You're gonna do your analysis, you familiar with that? Yes, sir. You do it every time, so come prepared. No one wants to wait for you to take a piss, so be set to squirt. If you can't leave a sample in a timely fashion, that's considered failure to submit to your analysis. It's grounds for arrest or revocation of your probation or parole. I'm 72. What? 72 years old, I'm ready when you are. I'm gonna be visiting you at your home and your job. It's my right to do so anytime, day or night. Please keep me informed if there's any special circumstances regarding your living conditions, like dogs or any other hindrances. If you make yourself inaccessible to field visits, you'll be cited for a violation. It's also grounds for revocation. If you're arrested for any reason... There won't be any more arrests. Look, it's a hard thing to get your head around, you understand? I think so. 35 years, it's a long time. Most guys looking at that kind of time, they never get out. And the few that do, it's a very hard time readjusting. This is not 1978 anymore. I know. You settling into the halfway house? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. But Mr. Terrell, they told me that you would be the one to make the decision, so could I get your permission to try and find a place of my own? What's wrong with it? Nothing, it's, it's fine, it's just, I spent an awful long time surrounded by a whole lot of people I'd really like to try to find a place of my own. Normally, I would say no to that, but considering your age, I don't see why not. Thank you. This is where you send your parole fees, money orders, or cashier's checks only. Mr. Terrell, is there somebody in the office here that could uh, point me in the direction of friendly housing? You got anything left of your gate? Uh, some, yeah. There's a weekly. I think it's called King Solomon's Reef. Thank you. Uh, is that far? You can ask a reception. They know where it is.
better hold her right there. Fucking shit, bird. <laughs> I could kill you right here. And it would be legal. <coughs> you surely could, Louie. You could splash my brains all over this patio. Hi, Louie. What? Hi, Louie. God damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you look old. Well, you look pretty grown up yourself. <coughs> Would you mind just lowering that barrel? Louie, you okay? <sighs> Better? Hand me that flask, sugar, please. Ah, oh, thank you. this too fucking long I was dancing with mrs. D and and she's winning when'd you get out Tuesday well, welcome back I hope you ain't too pissed that I didn't come up and see you well given the circumstances I understand oh. Wife? Junie died in 91. Her little heartstring just went pop. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. This isn't what I expected. No? You don't have it, do you? My money's gone. Yeah, it is. How? Jack. Jack? He got out in 88 and he took Carl and he killed Dennis. And he came looking for me and whatever I was holding for you. Jack took it. He came rolling in with a couple of guys, professional types. I don't know, I never, I never saw them before. And uh, told me what they did with Dennis and said that they were gonna do the same to me and Junie. And that Junie would go first. And I could watch. So we drove to a lost horse and dug it up. Louie, why'd you wait till now to tell me this? Come on, Victor, I couldn't tell you this while you were still in the joint. I mean, to me, that would be like sticking a fucking knife in your back. I'm sorry the way things worked out. Is Jack around? I don't know if he's still alive or not. He was five years older than me. You know what you're gonna do now? Not a clue. How about you? What do you think I'm going to do? Finish the flask and lie down. Yeah, that may not be the right order, but basically that's the truth. 
Well, is there anything else I can do for you? I can still wipe my ass. Uh, thank you. Hey, Vic. You were still the best I ever saw. And you still got that to work with. Best don't get caught, Louis. Chester, I'm calling for Chester Lincoln. Uh, uh, hello, uh, Chester, it, it's Victor. Victor Lustig, Quentin. Yeah. What you gonna do? I don't know. Was this uh, Louis for real? Yeah. How you know? The same way you know I'd never burn you. Hmm. How much was it? A lot. A lot? Enough. So what, you don't like it? Oh, oh no, it's fine. Well, eat up, Cap. What's the matter with you? That's interesting. What? Oh, there's no smoking in here, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Rosie, I'm so sorry, baby. That's my bad. That's my fault. Uh -huh. I mean, he's, he's a foreigner. He don't know no better. Really? I'll school his ass for you, all right? <laughs> now, this is what I'm talking about. What? This. Well, it's OK. It's, it's just be mindful. No, I don't recognize any of this. But just be mindful, baby. Chester. I don't know where I am. Planet Earth, baby boy. <laughs> yeah. I, I know how you feel. When I first got sprung, 
shit. I was 12 years and I was in shock. I can't imagine what it'd be like 35 years. Want any more coffee? No, thanks. You guys, let me know if you need anything else. I keep hearing the hacks call and roll in my sleep. I actually hear them. I don't feel comfortable stepping out my own front door without permission. You just got out, baby boy. I mean, it takes some time. See, see, I got lucky. Danita, hook me right up. I've applied for a few jobs. Okay, that's good. You know the last time I had a job interview? When was that? 1967. <laughs> a little different now, isn't it? Well, you didn't have to fill out applications then. You just talked to the owner, he dug you, you were in. Yeah. Yeah, that mom and pop shit's thing of the past. Human resources. Say, how's your P.O.? Oh, he doesn't give a shit. And I don't blame him. I'm a 72-year-old uh, con. Ex-con? Yeah, who did 35 years on a 44-year run, no job, no family. Where would you put the odds? Well, I ain't no bet betting man, see? Basically, I'm a pessimist. My blood type be negative. <laughs> step by step. That's all you can do. Should have show up. How's your gate? Oh, I've got some. Now, wait a minute. As long as you was in prison, <laughs> you got to have a fat gate. After parole fees, I've got about seven grand. Parole fees? Mm. You kidding me? They charge, they charge your ass for parole. I tell you, I was more comfortable inside. Say, you remember the first time you got locked up? Can you remember back that far? Yeah. What was the first thing you remember about being incarcerated? The cuffs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and how'd that feel? Totally out of control. Uh-huh. And uh, how'd that feel? I was terrified. How many times you been hemmed up since? I don't know. Oh, come on, motherfucker. Ask to me. Probably thousands. And there came a time when that shit just became routine. Right. <laughs> That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Shit will show up.
Yeah. Mr. Lustig? A little late, isn't it? Victor Lustig. Yeah. Who is it? Could you open the door for a moment? It's a little late. Sorry about that. I know it's late. Can't just wait until the morning. I was hoping I could talk to you tonight. What about? Who is it? It's Daniel. I don't know you. Okay. How was prison? 35 years free room and board. That sounds nice. That's home. Uh, how's your mother? She died. Ten years ago, last March. Sorry, I didn't know. How'd she die? Car accident. She would have been younger than you are now when I last saw her. She said you were the best safe man in the world. No? Not true? The best don't get caught. She said you could open anything you wanted to quicker than anyone. How is that? Practice. Your granddad. He was a locksmith, and uh, when I was 10, I spent the summer with him in his shop. I made keys, shit like that. The shop itself, it was tiny, but the back room was like a safe graveyard. I was littered with all kinds of crap, uh, old tools, broken locks, and books. Lots and lots of books, and all of them had something to do with locks. There's one book on safe cracking, this tiny book, I read it, and then I tried a, a simple lock, and I popped it the first try. From then on, <laughs> you couldn't keep me out of that shop. He had hundreds and hundreds of safes, and I just practiced, practiced, and practiced, and practiced, and practiced, until I could feel it right here. So you didn't drill him? No. Dynamite, thermic lance? Nope. I know. That, that doesn't sound very sexy. Why do they always show that shit in the movies? Clint Eastwood with that giant fucking drill gun. Yeah, well, there were guys who did that shit. I just never understood them. I mean, they forget one simple thing. Safe's built to be opened, just in a very specific way. So you could open anything? Danny, I haven't seen a safe in 35 years. Right, but, you know, back then. In 1978, there wasn't a combination of lock built that I couldn't open. Now, I got a question for you. Shoot. Was this the first time you came by? Yeah. I wasn't going to stop. I was going to come back. But then I saw you. I don't know. I couldn't help it. I just assumed that you wrote me off years ago. Look. For as long as I can remember, you weren't a real person to me. So, yeah, resentment builds up. And for a long, long time, I didn't want anything to do with you. Uh, it's not worth a shit, but I didn't plan. It was never my intention to leave. Hell, you were just about to turn four when I this is not why I came here. It's just the way it is. Doesn't matter anymore. I get it. There is nothing I can do or say that'll bring back the time we lost. That's all gone. And if you don't want to see me again after tonight, I won't blame you. Chester, have you been straight? Well, I mean, straight as I can be. 
Have you gotten into anything heavy? Hell no. Mm -mm. No. Don't even think about no, it. No, I'm not thinking about it. Yeah. 35 years in a cell, though, I learned to cope. How did you handle it? Well, I got me an old lady is what I did, which is what your sorry ass needs to do. No, I'm serious. It's a good pussy. Keep a man straight. Uh, wait a minute. How long was you with your old lady? 15 years. What, are you just up and split like that? Life gets weird, Chester. Oh, well, life's a fucking uh, freak show, but I mean, you just up and walked. Had to take a piss. Well, take a piss outside the car, <laughs> mother. No, you? I mean, had to take a piss. 4.30 in the morning, wake up, got to take a piss. We had been partying. I had too much to drink. They put me to bed. Mm. And I'm walking down the hallway, half asleep, on my way to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Finish my business, and then I hear this sound. And then it hit me. There's somebody getting it on in my living room. So I turn, and all I can see in that room is a woman's white back. So I head back to the bedroom thinking Viv's really going to be pissed off, and she wasn't there. So I figure she went to the bathroom, and I wait. She wasn't in the bathroom. So I throw in some clothes and split, and I'm sure that I would have gotten over it, but I got pinched so soon. 6 weeks later I'm in lockup and the last thing I saw of my wife was a white back in a dark room and it just stuck That's no reason to get stuck Do me a favor I want you to check out this fine little broad I got Oh, I don't know about her. Oh, no, 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 no. She fine, man. You enjoy her. Trust me on this. See, listen, I took this off myself, but uh, my plate kind of fooled along in through you. Why don't you go see her? You tell her I sent you, okay? How are you business? Yes. Natalia? Yes. I'm Russ. Hi, Russ. Can I get you something to drink? Uh, scotch would be nice. Ice? Yes, please. Okay. Why don't you have a seat, Russ? Get yourself comfortable. No, baby, sit on the back. Oh, sorry. You from L.A.? Chicago, but I've been out here a long time. Chicago. That city's just too cold. To, uh, warmer places. time since you've been with a woman? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. I was in prison for a long time. While you're in prison, did you think about someone like me? Oh, yeah. 
all the time? No. No, you, you learn not to do that. Do you like the way I smell? Yeah. Do you like the way this feels? Yeah. You remember the first time you did this? First time ever? Yeah. Just relax. It all comes back. Excuse me, I just need a minute. Russ? Russ, are you okay? I'm fine. I, I just need a minute. Yeah. I'm working this little bar down in Inglewood, managing. It's a chill little spot. You know, you need to come down and hang after hours. You drink like I used to. Used to? You seemed pretty thirsty earlier tonight. What about gambling? You do that? No, that was your mother's thing. I guess I hit the gene jackpot. I hope you're better at it than she was. <laughs> I'm worse. No way. That's not possible. But you might consider giving it up. I could stop any time. You think? Sure. Bet you a hundred bucks I could quit right now. So how come you guys got married? Your mother and I were very happy for 20 years. And then we met. Really? That's how it was? No. No, we were happy a long time, Danny. A long time. So, computers, huh? It's not just computers. All electronics. Like what? You know, it encompasses a huge array of shit. There's video cameras, pinhole and telephoto lens, IR goggles to see infrared beams, motion sensors, police scanners. I'm like the Wikipedia of surveillance and electronics. Just got a knack for it. Mom said by the time I was six, I could take anything apart and build my own circuit board. So... You're in the surveillance business. Well, no, not exactly. You fucking with me? This is the way I look at it, Victor. Anybody can do something straight. Anybody. So where's the challenge in that? So you're a bank robber? I'm not a stick-up man, no. It's more along the lines of Infiltration. I'm a bank infiltrator. An infiltrator? Yeah. How many times have you done this? Three times. First one I had to abort. And the other two worked? Yes, sir. Well, go on. Well, it would seem to me in a business such as ours, there's one fundamental principle that guides all other decisions, and that is the balance of risk and reward. Okay. 
So keeping that in mind, when's the best time to case a place? You tell me. When they're building it. Before the money shows up, nobody gives a shit. You can just walk in during daylight hours dressed like the gas man and delivery man. I got uniforms, IDs, and credentials are easy to get. That way I can take as long as I like putting my shit in there. What kind of shit? Surveillance. I put cameras and mics in the ATM room. When they put the machines in, I found out what kind of locks they were using. Then I pick them up online, tinker with them at home, pop in at my leisure, install them. I got my own key. And when the bank's finished? I just walk in, take what I want, lock the door behind me. The first job, they didn't even think there was a robbery. There were no visible signs of a break-in, so the cops called it a false alarm. Do it on the weekend, nobody knows until Monday morning. But you do still have to deal with alarms. Yeah, at the time I did. It's not so much a problem anymore. Well, let me ask you a question. Are these jobs, how much did you pull? First one, only 90,000. Only? What's the total? Just over 500. Cash out? Not yet, it's not enough. That is a lot of money. That's how much there was. That's not what's left. What's left? Nothing. Uh, what do you mean? That's it. There's nothing left. Nothing? I told you I have a gambling issue. Issue? You, uh, you know what this is? It's a uh, governmentally controlled conspiracy to keep the black man down. And guess what? It's working. I was just thinking, you know, motherfuckers be talking about it's a dog's life. It's a dog's life. Complaining and shit. But you watch a dog. Dog life look pretty good to me. I mean, all they be doing is eating, sleeping, shitting, fucking, sniffing. Hmm. It's the finer things in life. See, I tried to live my life like that for several years. This shit just didn't work out. Shit adds up. Like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. So do you know what you're going to do? I honestly don't have a clue. I figured you'd have a plan for when you got out. I had some money waiting, but a guy got to it a long time ago. Any way of getting it back? Nope. So what then? Get a job. Get a job, right? What are you going to do, be a store greeter? If they'll hire me. They get twitchy when they hear the words manslaughter, armed robbery. You really think you could handle doing something like that? My age, about the only thing I'm qualified for. You know what I mean. Wouldn't it make you nuts? I'd sure like to have a chance to find out. Why don't you do what you're good at? You know, what's that? What if an opportunity presented itself that was perfect? Something foolproof, what would you do? There's no such thing. Sure there no, is. No, there's not. OK, well. No, in the truest sense of the phrase, but there are things that are close, so close that you'd have to be fucking retarded not to take on. You, 
realize that just having this conversation, I am in violation. Hey, you've been in violation of your parole the entire time you've been hanging out with me. Now, I've gone round and round in my mind with this, and there's just no easy way to say it, so I'm just going to come right out with it. I'm working on something, and I need a safe man. It's got risk attached, but the reward far exceeds it. I mean, it's huge. I mean, like huge type huge, like fucking cosmic huge. Danny. Now, before you say anything, I just want you to think about something, okay? You could go off now. You could walk back into that rat dump shithole hotel and wait in line to be hired at Fuck Mart, so you can stand there like some insane gray-haired clown smiling and saying good morning to an endless army of morbidly obese, mouth-breathing morons and their idiot children. Collect your slave wages and then come back here and spend your remaining years wandering the hallways of King Solomon's Reef gulping whiskey out of a brown paper bag. You could do that, or you could do the smart thing and spend the rest of your rich-ass life with me and some big titty grass skirt wearing bitch on a tropical beach somewhere while she serves you a ridiculous fucking drink out of a coconut. That was very good. Did you just come up with that? Yeah. I'm impressed. Thanks. I think you got a bright future as a used car salesman. I'm serious. I know you are. I'm all in with this. OK. Now I've got some questions. It's a bank, right? Yeah. During business hours? No. Then you don't need crowd control. Two night guards. Then you do need suppression. Yeah, but we got that covered. Uh, how many people? Four plus a safe man. Do you know everyone involved? One of them, the other two here and there. Uh, have you ever worked with him before? No. So you were brought in? Yeah, my friend brought it to me. Mm. What's it take? 10.1, maybe 10.5. Your end? It's an even split, 10.1 each. 10.1 million. What kind of a bank keeps $40 million on hand? Just a regular bank. The bank doesn't know it's there. Not really, no. It's in a safety deposit vault. Two safes, the vault and an antique. And what's in the antique? 32,000 Troy ounces. You're killing me. Well, what about the alarms? Piece of cake. We just have to make a little service call the day before. How much time in? In the vault? A couple hours, two and a half tops. If it's after hours, what about the time locks? I took care of that. I'm also a licensed underwriter's laboratories tech. At least I am on paper. So you've already finessed the time lock. Yeah, I trashed the bulldog release. No one knows it yet, but that lock is toast. When's the next inspection? Not for 60 days. Is the gold there yet? Not yet, but soon. When are you going to go? Does that mean you're in? When do you want to go? It will be soon. Weeks, months? Eight, maybe nine days. That's not enough time. The whole thing hinges on you. Victor. Without you, this time frame, the job's impossible. I need you to make this thing right. Look, we don't get to choose what our gifts are, OK? We don't get to do that. The only thing we choose is whether we use them or let them fucking rot. I've already got schematics and model numbers for everything but the antique. I'll have that soon. Don't tell me anything more. Not tonight. Then you'll think about it? Yeah. I'll think about it. Thank you. Thanks for dinner. I got it. Dad, you all right? I'll call you later.
Took a long walk last night. Mm-hmm. I've been walking a lot. Yeah. You don't get to walk too much in lockup. Did you uh, bring your money? Yeah, cash. So I, I couldn't sleep. I'm sorry, what? I couldn't sleep last night. Well, you should try getting some exercise. Well, I took a long walk. And then I stopped about uh, 3 a.m. in a 7-Eleven. Went outside, sat down to drink my coffee, and this security guard pulled into the parking lot. Uh, he was about my age, but he was heavy. He had this, this old revolver that was slung low over his hip, but his gut hung out over the belt buckle, and the butt of his pistol was that old uh, cheap imitation plastic bone that we used to have on our cap pistols back when we were kids, remember? Uh, anyway, he walked slowly into the 7-Eleven, and I began to wonder how he and his little cap pistol would fare against some of the guys I ran with back in the day. Would they cut him even a drop of slack? And then I began to wonder how those old guys would fare against some of the monsters we're breeding now. It may be hard to believe, but they were different back then. So he came back out of the 7-Eleven and struggled back into his car, and he's sitting there blowing into his coffee cup. And I started to drink mine. And separated by 15, 20 yards, we shared a cup of coffee. And there was no difference. I mean, this guy had played it straight his entire life. And we wound up in the same parking lot drinking coffee at 3 in the morning. Why is it a competition? No, no, uh, no. It's that things should be different. But it's not. Right. You don't know. You don't know this guy. Yes, I do. Oh, you do? No, that's one of the things you learn real fast in lockup, how to size a person. Sign this. If you can't size the square, it just means you're it. But things should be different. You can pay Officer Vargas at the desk. What I need to impress upon all of you, and I can't stress this enough, no matter what, we have to be out of the bank by 2 a.m. You are certain the guards will be? As certain as can be. And how certain is that? I watch these guys every uh, night. Oh, you do that? I tapped into the security cam feed. These two are real creatures of habit. They take their lunch at the exact same time every night. Sometimes they switch off, but it's always the same time. Russell walks to the kitchen for coffee twice a night at 9 and 2. Omar eats, then goes to the bathroom like clockwork. 
Do they go out? No. The doors are never open once the day shift exits the building at 7 sharp. Never? Never. Not until 5 a.m. Tell me about the alarm. Alarms. There's five of them all together. Four on site, one external. OK. The four on site are nothing. The external ping, that's a bit more tricky. Ping? The computer just looks at the overall integrity of the system. So what do Except we... I know when they're going to do it. Is it random? Of course. So how? Because I'm running the system. At least I will be, just for a little while when we're inside the bank. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have to worry. It just means we know when it's going to happen. We got a 15 to 20 second window. When that warning sounds, everybody's got to drop everything. How long? How long does that last? 60 seconds, two minutes times. 15 seconds to disappear. Sound impossible. You don't have to disappear. I just got to ghost the ping. What? And I got to intercept it. And you got to, everyone's got to stop. Nobody can make any movements, at least nothing that wouldn't be routine or customary for the two guards. Certainly nothing in the vault. I don't like that. Look. All we got to do is not make any movements for a couple of minutes when the warning comes in. It may not even come in. We could be in and out before it pings at all. You should have told us that before. I didn't know that before. I just put this together when I took those fuckers apart. Look, with Danny handling the security, all you got to do is grab the bank manager, have him open the vault, and wheel the safe out on your push cart. No. Then he's just take it home, open it at your leisure, no pressure. No. What do you mean, no? GPS. The small safe is, is GPS. What the fuck is GPS? Global positioning satellite. It's traceable up to 10 feet. As soon as we move it, someone's going to know about it. And you can't hack it? It's a military GPS unit. I can crack it, but I have to touch it first. So, really? What we are saying is, this all depends on you, Mr. Victor. How fast can you open safes? Well, it's been a while. But when I was in practice, uh, depending on the safe, say a simple home safe, under five minutes. How is that possible? I mean, this isn't a normal home safe. No, it's not. It's a vault door, a four-turn tumbler. With how many combinations? Over a hundred million possible combinations. And what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go through every single one of those combinations? That's not how it works. Uh, so tell us, how does it work? Have you got a safe here? Of course. Why don't I show you? Okay. Is it locked? Of course. Okay. Tie me. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Start. The old man's lost it. We're wasting our fucking time. I've already got two of the numbers. If you want me to do this, you have to be quiet.
Just after midnight, we go in. Sasha, Aryan, and I will handle security. You alarms, and magician will deal with safes. You got any information on the second safe yet? No. But you will? Yeah. Okay, there's just one more thing I gotta know. How dependable is your lead? All the way. Say what? What is it? Is 100%. Look, I understand that you say that, and no disrespect, but how can you guarantee that with no paper? I mean, you got no paper, right? I mean, it's only the most basic fucking thing. If you could show me a manifest, can you do that? Look, I've served time with guys that went in on a score with nothing but their ambition. I don't do that. If I'm going in there, I gotta know it's there. We know it's there. Yes, but I need to know. It's my money. We're stealing your fucking money? My family's money. Look, my father was a very powerful man in the Soviet military, a man with the contacts. When the party collapsed, everything in the country went up for sale. And I mean, everything. Going out of business, superpower style. So my father and his friends, they made the connections. They could move anything. Between 91 and 94, we moved more military hardware than anyone else. Shall we sold a Victor-class submarine to some Colombian piece of shit for 15 mil US. Pennies on the dollar, but nobody gave a shit. To pop pops, it was free money. Everyone was happy. It's a good life. <laughs> it was fun. But nothing in this business lasts. Even family. Now, I worked hard really fucking hard to make a lot of people rich. And I won't be kept on the chain like some fucking dog when the time comes to take what's mine. You understand? So, all you have to know is next week, this bank in Los Angeles, we will take back a little bit of Pop Pop's gold. And we will do it. Even if I have to blow up the whole fucking building. So, you can either do it with us, and then your son's death is fulfilled and you can make a nice payday for yourself, <clears throat> or you don't. Just walk out of that door and we will never see each other again. But, uh, Danny, has to stay. say anything look I'm really sorry this was you fucked me what you fucked me you lied you told me a friend brought you in on this he did bullshit you're desperate you owe those guys that's desperation now you got no wiggle room here Danny and you're acting like a little kid playing some game you fucked me you should have told me the truth really why is that? I don't fucking know you. I've spent more time with every guy in that room than I have with you. What the fuck I owe you? What, because you're my pappy? Give me a fucking break, Victor. Tell me one reason I owe you anything. Because you brought me into this. Now look at me. This thing we do, 
It's not about how good you are or how smart or even the fucking money. This is about survival. You're such a pro, you should have seen right through me. Oh, kid, I saw you a mile off like you had a siren and a spotlight. I thought this was the only way. And now it's out of hand. Everything comes due at once. I don't know what I'm doing. That's why you looked me up. Victor, I'm out of options. If I don't do this, I'm going to do it. Thank you. One condition. Name it. From now on, nothing but the truth. OK. Now, how much are you into these guys for? 225,000. Are you just going to keep repeating that? Well, I want you to hear it. I can hear you. How? How? How the fuck did you do this? How'd you get that deep into these guys? It was a huge hand. Apparently. How'd you get in the game? Sasha. You mean that kid just now? Yeah. And how close are you? I know him. We're not best friends. How close is he to the other two? Not so much. He plays in their game. He was my in. Everybody who works with a connected crew's got to be thoroughly vetted. If you're not vouched for by someone on the inside, you are disposable. So here's how it's going to play out. When this gig is over, you, me, your friend Sasha, we're dead. No. Look. What leverage have we got? We got nothing. Would you give away 22 million bucks of Pop Pop's money if you didn't have to? Look, they're businessmen. We are contractors. And when was the last time you saw a businessman worth his weight in dog shit to gave anyone an even break, let alone for his birthright? You got any money left? No. All right. I got just shy of three grand. I say you take that money and get out of town. What are you going to do? What about me? I don't know where you are. You think they're going to give a shit about that? It gets complicated, doesn't it? Now, you know what you're talking about, you know? That's a, that's a penitentiary decision, you know that? I don't give a shit about that. Be better off inside anyway. Well, there's a problem right there. I mean, that's where you're gonna fumble the ball, man. That type of thinking. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, what are you talking about? This is not about me. It's the kid. Kid is fucked. He's just fucked. You can't save nobody. You know that. You can't save nobody. OK. Yeah. Let's go. Where's Danny? He got held up. He said he would call me if anything changed. Shit happens. You ready to get rich, old man?
What is wrong, magician? Nothing. You look nervous. I don't like it when things change. Don't worry about it. He say he have to take care of minor technical difficulty. Nothing has changed. guys. Here. Oh. What did I tell you? To call you if anything changes. Did anything change? Yes. I should have called you. Did anything else change? No. That's the only thing. We're still ahead of the clock. Good. Why did you do that, huh? Didn't I tell you to lie still? Why did you do that? Do you know what this is? Mm, I bet you do. What is it like being there all tied up like a hog, blind, hmm? knowing that at any moment something's going to pop straight from your brain? 
We could do it right now. All I have to do <laughs> is squeeze. I wonder if you live long enough to taste your own brain. Ario, passi di. Relax. Problem. Okay, so what? It's a damn good safe. Oh, you open the big fucking door. You're telling me you can't open this little box? It's a bear burner. First auto locking system, pre war German design, assembled in Switzerland. Oh, shit. Can you open the little box? I don't know. I haven't handled one before. What do you think? I think I can. It just may take a bit. What is most time we have? A little under two hours. How much can we push it? No, that's it, a little under two hours. Will? OK, here's what we do. You and me inside the vault. You lock us in, then you guys keep the guards calm. I'll crack this fucker before time's up. do this. You still think I'm the shitty judge of character? More importantly, you think you're leaving here with my seven million dollars? Come on, Victor. Back away from the safe. Sasha, stand over here by me. Well, what do you think? Are you leaving with my money or not? This is not the fuck. Sure, this is the time for this. They're gonna be coming through that door any second. So what? Get it, 
Еще одна! Тележка быстро! Ара, подвис! Тележка! Заткнись ты, блядь, уже! А? Не ты уже в пути, торопись! Еще один! Would you please turn that thing off? Uh, we don't have a lot of time. Look fake to me. Mm. That's some pretty looking shit there. You want me to go get the cart? No. I got it. Will this suit your needs, sir? Oh, yeah. Just about perfect. Fantastic. 